the riddle of sustainability in the Philippines. Um, the first one I want to say is people know how to grow herbs. They know how to uh, cultivate stuff. Um, you've got a lot of generations of farmers there, but more importantly, they're taught it from childhood in school. Where the problem happens is everybody will steal your plants, etc. So if you've got your uh, herb garden you've been growing for ages, and or, or, or like us, we have mangoes, tomatoes, uh, chilies, etc. People will just help themselves, and they don't even see anything wrong with stealing stuff that you've spent months uh, cultivating. It's a it's a bit strange, but it's why so many people just think, "Why well, should I bother?" Um, because I know somebody brought up recently that a lot of the problems in the Philippines are more to do with attitude change and I would say it has got a huge potential if you know people adapted you know recognize that somebody's space is there recognizing that somebody just spent four months producing something doesn't give you a right to go and steal it recognizing the fact it's actually theft recognizing the fact that you've actually caused harm to that other individual to the point they may not grow anything anymore um, and the reason I'm bringing this up because a lot of the time we have NGOs and people thinking we can change things in the Philippines it's not going to be changed in the uh, in the field as such it's got to be changed in the schools it's got to be showing that it's more important that you don't steal stuff rather than actually growing it because if you've got people growing it already you stealing it is causing more harm than if you didn't grow anything at all um, and there's a lot of stuff like that in the Philippines you get these NGOs come in there and will I mean it, there was something brought up about container housing I do a fair bit on container housing, it, it's something that interests me, um, I've done modular construction, I've done um, a similar similar um, shape to a container with the outlining posts etc, but using foam injected panels, um, I've worked on construction with those for uh, office blocks, morgues, hospitals, clinics. Um, so I've, I've done a fair bit on them but one of the problems you have in the Philippines is no money so when somebody goes right we're going to go into this village we're going to put these new containers we're going to scrap all their horrible housing um, this cheap rattan homemade stuff and we're going to put these containers in the NGOs do not engage properly with the local community the first thing you've got is containerized units need some sort of cooling doesn't matter what design it is they need natural either you've got to have natural cooling or you've got to put air con um, the designs that most people use do not support natural cooling um, the other side of this being you would need air conditioning nobody can afford air conditioning if they could afford air conditioning they wouldn't be living in a little nipper hut so you end up with this heat build up during the day and at night you've got the reverse because obviously like cars you, you don't get in a car on a freezing day and go oh it's still warm in here do you? it's freezing <laughs> so it's not the best um, product for that environment um, now I'm not saying it's impossible because what fascinates me is actually working with it to make it possible but the problem you get is NGOs, I should actually explain, NGO is non-government organizations, basically they're normally foreign investment uh, playing God in somebody else's lands. Um, I'm, I'm trying not to be negative on it, but the, the, the point being is they'll come in with their ideas, but they should ask the locals. The nipper huts etc are built a specific way for a reason. The reason you put them on stilts is when you've got a property this high, you get the sunlight hitting the ground all day long. At night, 
the heat rises out the soil and heats the floor of the house. The rattan sides, etc., allows airflow, but still waterproof. It's all products which are biodegradable. They're environmentally friendly. Um, so I would say the Filipinos have got it right. A lot of the time we've got it wrong because we're looking at it from a Western perspective. The reason I would put container type buildings in um, would be security. Um, because I, I had a guy at my call center seem to get robbed every like six to eight weeks. Um, it's because people can wander in and out of some of these houses um, because they're not secure. But I would also say when I've worked on very large construction sites, there's been a guy with a few containers and he sits in a container all day drinking tea because you can't get any tools or anything unless you go and see him because he holds all the keys. Now, in a community, you could have a community leader, a barangay captain or whatever, that contains that. You know, they, they look after the stuff that is important to people that needs to be safe. Because you've got to remember, a lot of these um, things weren't a problem before. I've talked before. I've talked about it before. Where the biggest problem I see in Mindanilia and other areas is migration, because in our community everybody knows each other. I'd say about eighty percent of the people are related to each other. So theft is very um, well. I wouldn't say shunned upon. I'd say unlikely. Um, I remember when we had Graham, Graham the Canadian guy that stopped in a house opposite ours. He'd gone out a few times leaving his front door open <laughs> and the the people that owned that property used to go there and lock his front door because they were worried about somebody you know going through the neighborhood and you know might rob his house so they would actually go and lock his front door for him because they'd see the open walking past <laughs> and they would like shout him couldn't get him so they would just lock the door and then uh, just go um, but they would come over to our because we own the store opposite they'd come and say oh we've locked his front door we were just worried about it that's the sort of community I live in um, we have had thefts from people outside the area um, there was some trainers stolen uh, from a neighboring house and there was a motorbike theft somewhere it was dealt with quite swiftly um, nothing to do with me um, but the person that did it was a well, allegedly did it was a drug addict and he was actually stabbed by the person that thought he had stole his motorbike um, to the point he nearly bled to death on the way to the hospital that's Filipino justice in a community um, we don't have many problems I'm not saying we we'll, we go out and attack everybody because I don't get involved in any of this I just hear later this like when I go oh where is such and such and it's like oh he's he's had to run away because he's stabbed um, this guy that he thought stole his motorbike but we knew this guy had stole the trainers so you know it's so my my personal view on it is prevention is better than cure so I went and put CCTV in that covers the whole area um, that stops all this happening um, now I've gone off so far off a tangent here I'll go back to the property um, the point being is transients are more of a problem um, in our community they do not like people coming in from outside they'll get kids coming from the uh, the beggars they're looking for the plastic bottles and stuff they don't want them in the community um, one of the ideas I came up with was to put uh, some plastic bin somewhere and uh, where basically you just fill it up with plastic bottles tin cans etc and they just come and empty them themselves but you know they don't have to enter our residential area because um, people just they know that they'll report back about what's there etc as such they do not want them there um, that is a real concern but this is where I'm saying about these containers if you have a container in a community that's controlled by one person then 
things you want secure could be secured in it. Um, that's that's where I would actually utilize a container house more than anything else in the Philippines to give somebody a secure place where the barrel guy captain sits and then you could have a tunneled um, a tunnel to guard by the way that is based next to it um, during the night uh, so it's protected 24 7 because you gotta remember people are stealing from people with very little in the first place reducing that actually helps the community because why would you like same with the plants why would you want to put an effort into growing plants so that your neighbors can come and steal them and eat them for you the answer is you wouldn't and this is the problem people will steal the the most basic things so why would it ever evolve into something bigger why would you want to put a community bus in when you know that somebody's going to steal the fuel steal the parts etc and yes it does happen um, that's why I think a lot of this needs to change in the schools um, people need to be educated it's not alright it's not funny you can't just laugh off that we stole the plants from the neighbor next door it should be shamed embarrassed etc to say no this isn't alright we haven't got money but it's not for us to steal the neighbors we could ask the neighbor we could help the neighbor grow more plants we can get involved but stealing from them is completely unacceptable.